Jena Jena Sadaka Tamyena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pachari Nay Nirvasesa Sunya Vadi Pasjatya Deya Satarine Pancha Kalpa Thiru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Pacha Patitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasana Gaur Vaktavindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hmm. So I wanted to focus on one particular verse in the Bhagavad Gita today and start by reading the preceding verse. Uh, the verses are in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse number 40 and 41. <laughs> Neha Bikrama Naso Sti Prakyavayo Nagudyate Swalpam Apisya Dharma Sya Trayate Mahato Vaya. In this endeavor there is no loss or diminution. A little advancement on this path can protect one from the from the most dangerous type of fear. We'll read this purport and then we'll go on. We'll read a little of the purport. Activities in Krishna consciousness or acting for the benefit of Krishna without expectation of sense gratification is the highest transcendental quality of work. Even a small beginning in such activity we find no impediment, nor can that small beginning be lost at any stage. Any work begun on the material plane has to be completed. Otherwise, the whole attempt becomes a failure. But any work begun in Krishna consciousness has a permanent effect, even though not finished. The former of such work is therefore not a loss, even if his work in Krishna consciousness is incomplete. 1% done in Krishna conscious bears permanent results so that the next beginning is from the point of 2%, whereas a material activity without 100% success, there is no profit. A Jamil perform his duty in some percentage of Krishna consciousness, but the results he enjoyed at the end was 100% by the grace of the Lord. There's a nice verse in this connection, Taktvasvadharma charanam bhujam harer, Ajama Pokata Pate Atodia Di Petrako Vidva Badra Abuta Musa Kim Kovarta Apto Bajates for Dharma Taha. If someone gives up his occupational duty and works in Krishna consciousness and then falls down at the, on account of not completing his work, what loss is there on his part? And what can one gain if one performs his material activity perfectly? Or as the Christians say, what profit the man if he gaineth the whole world yet suffer the loss of his eternal soul? Material activities and the results end with the body, but work in Krishna consciousness carries a person again to Krishna consciousness even after the loss of the body. Unless one is sure to have a chance in the next life to be born again as a human being, either in the family of great culture Brahmanas or rich aristocratic family that will give one a further chance for elevation. That is the unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness. So we can comment a little bit on this. Um, we, we broached this subject, I think maybe about 10 days ago in one discussion with another one of our groups on a Thursday 
venue. But the uh, point that has a significant here is that any advancement in Krishna consciousness can uh, free one from, as you say here, most dangerous type of fear. Now you'll see in the purport, Prabhupada doesn't repeat that statement. What is the most dangerous type of fear? Fear, but he indicates it at the very end of the purport. And uh, if you go down to the end of the purport, the indication is there. And that is, keep going down. It says here, at least one is sure to have a chance in his next life of being born as a human being, either in a family of great culture, Brahmana, or a rich Christic, Christ, Aristotle, aristocratic family. So that day, most dangerous type of fear is losing the chance to perform Krishna consciousness. And what that translate in is that one will lose the opportunity to get a human form of life. So in any form of life lower than human being, one cannot actually execute devotional service. Of course, there are rare cases, but that was only by the mercy of the Lord directly. But in general, or when we say essentially, one has to stay at least in the human form of life to get a chance to continue in devotional service. So this most dangerous type of fear is that one will again be thrown into the cycle of birth and death without any connection with or any opportunity to have a chance to execute devotional service. So devotional service is all auspicious and any work done in it carries eternally. And then eventually it will reach a point in a cumulative way where one's consciousness starts to renew itself in its original state. In other words, the original consciousness of the living entity is Krishna conscious. Spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness is synonymous because spirit means in relationship to the Supreme Spirit, which is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or sometimes we use the ge generic term God consciousness. So here we have um, uh, an assurance of the benefit of executing devotional service. Now this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam 1517 is very instructive. It's actually spoken by Lord, uh, by Narada Muni, spoken by Narada Muni. Well, I think it's spoken by Lord Brahma to Narada Muni. Yeah, and he's giving him some general instructions. And that instruction is that uh, Material life, whatever you do, if you don't do it to completion, and no one actually can complete their material life because material desires are endless. That you can't satisfy material desires. Or material activities leave one with nothing at the end of life. One has to give up all that the results of the material activities, any success that is achieved in that material activity, everything is lost at the time of death, simply wiped away by the element of time. So Krishna consciousness is, is above the three modes of material nature and therefore the time element, which is part of the material energy, cannot affect devotional service. So sometimes we see in our Krishna conscious society, devotees sacrifice their Krishna consciousness in order to perfect their material life. Um, this happens quite often thinking that I can put my Krishna consciousness on hold 
or push it aside because I need to focus on my uh, material uh, plans, desires, needs, or whatever. And we see, um, I just like I remember when I was in uh, New Vrindavan in the early days when we first joined, it was a very nice devotee. Um, he was a postman, it was interesting. He used to deliver the mail before he became a devotee. He was living in one of the local cities nearby and joined the Hare Krishna movement in New Vrindavan. But he couldn't stay with the process. He would come for some time and then he'd give it up to do some material activities and then he'd come back after some time and again, make his attempt to perform devotional life. And then after some time, he'd be drawn away again. So this would go on two, three times, but it was very noticeable that every time he came back to Krishna consciousness, each time he stayed less. And finally, there was no return at all. So that is what happens when we uh, see that in material activities are more important in our spiritual life. <laughs> we can satisfy our material needs because Krishna is Om Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purna Purna Buddha Sate Purna Siya Purna Daya Purna Veva Vasishite. This material world is perfect and complete, and it's completely perfect on all aspects of itself. And Krishna is a complete balance. So if one stays, in, stays engaged in devotional service, all of one's material desires become spiritualized and become fulfilled automatically, completely. And uh, when we say with the utmost satisfaction, because Krishna means everything, not just spiritual, but but that includes all aspects of life because everything works in accordance with his plan. And therefore one stays in the supreme activity, which is devotional service, then the lower activities of material needs and desires automatically become fulfilled. Sometimes we don't, we, we make this distinction between material and spiritual. The distinction has, should be made in terms of where we put our time and energy. But Krishna doesn't make that distinction. Therefore, Krishna, when he sees a devotee uh, serving him nicely, he will also facilitate that devotee's needs on material platform. And that's Krishna's way of reciprocating. One of, one of the ways, not just the, the way, but one of the ways that Krishna reciprocates. So no need to find any other activities but devotional service. Okay, go to the next verse. I want to focus on this verse more for today's class. Vyavyasatmika budir those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. Somewhat related to the previous verse, but you'll see there's some unique points here. A strong faith that by Krishna consciousness, one will be elevated to the highest perfection of life is called Vyavyat Satmika intelligence. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Strata Sabdi Vishwa Kaha Sarida Nishchiya Krishna Bhakti Kala Sarva Karma Krita Hoi. Faith means unflinching trust in something sublime. When one is engaged in the duty of Krishna consciousness, he need not act in relationship to the material world with obligations to family traditions, humanity or nationality. Food of activities are the engagements of one's reaction from the past good or bad deeds. 
When one is awake in Krishna consciousness, he need no longer endeavor for good results in his activities. When one is situated in Krishna consciousness, all activities are on the absolute plane. They are no longer subject to the dualities like good and bad. The highest perfection of Krishna consciousness is renunciation of the material conception of life. This state is automatically achieved by progressive Krishna consciousness. This is what we were saying in relationship to the previous verse. Continue. The resolute purpose of a person in Krishna consciousness is based on knowledge. I'll read that again. The resolute purpose of a person in Krishna consciousness is based on knowledge. Sometimes devotees have ecstatic uh, experiences. They go to a kirtan, they have a lecture, and they, oh, they get overwhelmed with the emotion of devotion. They may even cry or express extreme states of happiness and ecstasy. That is not enough to keep you connected to Krishna consciousness. Even if you experience ecstatic symptoms. One, the only way you can stay fixed in Krishna consciousness is by knowledge. Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sadhula Bhava. A person in Krishna consciousness is the rare good soul who knows perfectly that Vasudeva Krishna is the root of all manifested causes. So this is the knowledge. Watering the root of the tree automatically distributes waters to the leaves, branches, acting for Krishna consciousness, the highest service you can render to everyone, family, self, country, humanity, society. If Krishna is satisfied, then everyone will be satisfied. Service in Krishna consciousness is how our best practice under the able guidance of a spiritual master, bona fide representative of the Lord, and who knows the student and can help him act in Krishna consciousness. To be well versed in Krishna consciousness, one has to act firmly and obey the Guru, and one should accept the instructions of the spiritual master as his life mission. So here's a connection with the verse, and we'll read this verse first. Yasya Prashada Bhagavad Prashada. Yasya prashadan nagati kutoki dayam stuvam tasyad yasyastrisangyam vande guru shri charanadavindam. So we, re we recite this prayer every day. Satisfying the guru means satisfying Krishna. If the guru is not as far, nagati kutoki, as it says here, one cannot make any advancement. The, the whole process. Prabhupada says, depends on perfect knowledge of the soul beyond the conception of the body. Not theoretically, but practically, when there is no chance, no longer a chance for sense gratification manifested in fruit, fruit of activity, when it is fixed in mind and do not diverted by karmic activities or fruit of results. So an interesting point, and Prabhupada used to make in relationship to himself, connecting this verse, is there is a commentary on this verse by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, in which he explains that, um, to put it in a very succinct way, whether it's easy, quote unquote, or difficult, quote unquote, it's not a consideration. Mm -hmm. If devotional service is easy, very nice. If it's not easy, very nice. It really doesn't matter. If one is fixed in knowledge and one is engaged in devotional service, then success will automatically come by understand the principle that is given in this verse, resolute and purpose. In other words, one is fixed in their devotional service and not diverted by happiness, distress, reverses, whatever may come in the form of obstacles or difficulties, or even 
one getting attracted to something that is very nice but is not Krishna conscious. So this verse kind of illustrates how to stay fixed. It doesn't matter what I'm undergoing in terms of what I'm experiencing. Let me stay fixed on serving the Lord in his devotional service. That is the success of devotional service. Um, we call, I remember there was one devotee, very nice devotee. Uh, he's in Krishna conscious still yet today, and he's, he's actually a leader in many areas. But when I first joined in 1973 in New Vrindavan, he was also a new bhakta. So we met in our initial days of Krishna consciousness. And uh, this was New Vrindavan, and the winters were quite severe there in New Vrindavan. I mean, sometimes there would be so much snow in the wintertime, you know, that they would bury, you know, <laughs> trees it was like cold and the winters were long and arduous in that area of the uh, united states known as west virginia so he would come in the springtime every year usually around april may and then when october uh, would come or even november he would leave and then he would be gone the whole winter going to a city temple somewhere where it was warmer. And then he would come back again in the spring. And he would do this every year. <laughs> he wouldn't stay for the difficulties that we undergo, got undergone during the winter seasons, which were quite severe, comparatively speaking. So, um, of course, somehow or other, he transcended that and became fixed in Krishna consciousness. But using that deficiency or that uh, inebriety, we can see that this takes one away from the process of devotional service because material energy will throw obstacles at us. Material existence will throw reverses Material energy, may, devotees may also be uh, confused in why things happen the way they happen. Like there was this famous book that was circulating when I first joined Krishna consciousness, why do bad things happen to good people? It was given by one rabbi, uh, Rabbi Kush. Kushner, his name was Kushner, and uh, the book was well received by the general population of America, and actually it made its way around the world. It became one of the best-seller books in the history of bestsellers. It was on the bestseller list for years, and what it said is that uh, well, God is good but he's not all powerful. And he based his theory or his false theory on the idea that uh, his son, he had a son, son was born with a very rare disease called progeria. And progeria was something that you go through your life symptoms very quickly and you die. So his son was born and died at the age of 14. He died of old age. He died a natural death of old age at 14. He went through his whole life in 14 years. So he was thinking, a very rare disease. You find it in Africa sometimes. Um, he based his whole idea that, well, my son, he never, never did anything wrong. So why is God putting him in this situation? But since he was a man of God, he, he had faith that God was a good person. <laughs> but then again, in order to justify some reasoning for what was happening, he said that God is not all powerful. 
he's all good, but not all powerful. And therefore he made this theory, um, bogus theory that God, he has many, many responsibilities. He has to manage the whole material universes. And sometimes he misses something <laughs> to use the very simplified form of his description. He's not always on top of everything. So sometimes good people become victimized and God is not there to, you know, bail them out. So, of course, we wrote a response. Ravinda Sarupraghu wrote a response to this book saying that, you know, good thing, bad things don't happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. <laughs> and then he, re then he uh, so very nicely showed the whole process of reincarnation and how one is getting results from their previous lives. But people want that. They want to they want to put God in a particular category where if everything works according to how they feel God should work, then he's okay. He's a good guy. We can reelect him for the post. He's um, you know, he's up, he's doing a good job. But if we have another idea of how God should work and it's not in line with what's happening, then, uh, you know, sometimes we lose faith. Prabhupada talks about how in World War II, uh, the wives, the sisters, uh, the, uh, the wives, the sisters, and the daughters of the soldiers were going to the churches, temples, synagogues, praying for the return of their son, their husband, their father. And what happened was he wasn't coming back. Therefore, they gave up God. <laughs> so people have their own ideas of what God should be. But God works according to his own understanding, and he's always good. And he's all powerful, too. And so, but whatever comes our way are, are opportunities for growth in spiritual life and for uh, cutting us free from the attachments of material activities. Mm -hmm. So Srila Prabhupada said, I have become successful based on this verse, that I kept this verse foremost in my execution of devotional services that I was determined to spread Krishna consciousness no matter what. <laughs> it didn't matter my successes and failures were simply coming, but it didn't deter me or make me complacent in my execution of devotional service. And Prabhupada also wrote in another statement, I had a, I had a walk through fire. I didn't look left, I didn't look right. I had to walk through fire in order to spread this Krishna consciousness movement. That's an exact quote. So Prabhupada said, this verse was my focus. Stay a resolute in person, purpose. Resolute in purpose. What is that resolution fixed in the execution of devotional service? No matter what. So that takes faith. And that faith is supported by transcendental knowledge as it's mentioned here. And when that knowledge becomes strong, that faith develops and one then faith automatically develops outside of knowledge in relationship to the activities of devotional service. So one gains that faith uh, more and more simply by the experiences they have in devotional service. So this verse is interesting. And then the opposite is mentioned here, though those whose intelligence are irresolute, they have many things to do. They can't focus. Mm -hmm. you know? In other words, they have many desires to fulfill and therefore they can't stay focused. You see that even in the material world, people have so many ideas on what they wanna do in life and they're always going to so many different things, changing this way, that way, this way, that way or becoming you know, overwhelmed with so many ideas and plans. They never can really perfect anything in life. So here it says resolute in purpose. 
aim is one. Krishna speaking this, he refers to Arjuna as the most beloved child of the Kurus. Mm -hmm. Arjuna was very dear to Krishna. Yeah. He had Krishna's personal association and he was also in a position to command Krishna as a warrior to drive his chariot in the battle. This was also interesting. Krishna became the personal servant of Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra. So their intimacy was quite, quite deep. <laughs> quite deep. So it's interesting this verse here. So if we uh, keep this verse foremost in our Krishna conscious activities, resolute in purpose, and that means fixed in devotional service without considering loss or gain, happiness and distress, success or failure, whatever, then one will eventually reach perfection in devotional service. Okay, so we'll stop here and open it up for discussion. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions, comment or realization, please unmute yourself or raise your hand or you can type in chat window. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for again enlightening us on these two very important verses for our Krishna consciousness. I have like some clarification on these particular lines in this purport. When Krishna is satisfied, then everyone is satisfied. Um, while we can understand that we want to satisfy Krishna. We want to please Krishna. Not everyone is pleased with us. While we are trying to please Krishna, we can see sometimes family members are annoyed, neighbors are annoyed. Even Srila Prabhupada's own life, his own family was unhappy and so on. So how do we understand this, that when Krishna is satisfied, everyone is satisfied? Well, it means... No, no, if you're executing devotional service, Krishna is called Mula. Another name for Krishna is Mula. Mula means root. That also refers, there's one verse that if you put food in the stomach, all the limbs of the body get the benefit of the food. And the stomach receives the food. If you water the root of the tree, the branches, the twigs, the flowers, everything connected with the root gets the benefit of the rooting. So everyone is getting some benefit through the process of devotional service. The devotees directly, because they are they're connected to that root in devotional service. Non-devotees are cut off from the root because they don't accept that as the foundation. So what they're getting is not, they're getting some kind of satisfaction in the sense that Krishna is still providing for them whatever they need to live in this world generally, and even if they, in other words, he's fulfilling their desires through the material energy. The results are, of course, different, but the satisfaction, there's a sense of, of Krishna giving them some satisfaction through the fact that uh, they're connected indirectly, but because they're connected no one, no one can be not connected to Krishna, but they're not getting happiness. They're not getting, they're not getting uh, progress in life. But we use another example, just like when it rains, it rains not only on the places where the rain is needed, such as the agricultural fields, but it rains on the rocks, on the ocean. So, when Krishna is satisfied by the execution of devotional service, everyone benefits somehow, but devotees directly benefit. 
and directly get the satisfaction. The materialists don't feel that satisfaction, but they're getting something because Krishna is satisfied. They're getting his benefit in the form of some material uh, amenities or some material support. Sometimes we say that because of the presence of devotional service in the world, you know, the world's still going on. <laughs> Imagine if there was no devotees in the world. This place would just be, it would, be, it would probably be nothing existing. Because Krishna would, everything would be destroyed simply by the sinful activities. So somehow there's a balance where the, the process of devotional service keeps a certain atmosphere of uh, fulfillment, even amongst the non devotees, using that same example. And the water goes everywhere. But devotees benefit directly and can feel the benefit. Whereas the non devotees, they get something through the, ex through the external energy. That's it. So that means, uh, am I understanding this correctly? That means Krishna blesses even those people who may be inimical to us, who may not like our devotional service, but um, they're going to get some benefit simply because of this one person who is a devotee in the family? They get, they get something, yeah. Oh, yeah. If they're in, in family members, yeah, they get some benefit too. That's more direct when it comes to family members because of the connection is there just like Dhruva Maharaj's mother qualified to go back home back to Godhead although she wasn't a pure devotee simply by the power of Dhruva Maharaj's devotional service and his request to give him benediction to his mother Krishna fulfilled his request uh, and of course she was the one that directed him in the beginning towards Krishna so that was her 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 good quality. But yeah, that's true. You see, uh, family members are benefiting from one's devotional service. But that's a gyata sukriti. That's unknowingly getting benefits. Mm. Yeah, if you're associating with someone who is a great person, you also get the benefit of that association. If you associate with someone who's a bad person, you also get the negative responses with that, of the, of that association. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you for a wonderful class on, and the point that I like the most is being resolute. Vyavasai, uh, Vyavasai Atmikta Buddhi. Mm -hmm. um, so, Maharaj, I have uh, two questions. Um, the first is what uh, drive us to believe that we need to we need to perfect our material lives better and put priority over that than the spiritual life for the practicing devotees not for newcomers but for practicing devotees what is it is it because we are in a very passionate mode or is it a combination of various things i would like to understand that Maharaj. we may have to give some attention to material needs and that is normal and natural and it's expected but when we replace that, when we replace that, our spiritual life with this, with this as a priority, then we lose both, actually. So, yeah, you have to arrange to take care of the family members. You have to arrange to make sure you have enough food. Uh, there's basic arrangements that are needed within the family. But how much time and energy should we devote to that? If that time and energy uproots our 
execution of devotional service or interferes with it, then, then it's a loss, both, on, both spiritually and materially. So therefore, you know, Krishna says, balance your material needs in such a way as they support your spiritual life and not take away from that. But one who is fixed in Krishna consciousness will know that by pleasing Krishna in devotional service, Krishna will make all the arrangements we need to take care of everything on the material level. And we find out we have to do less and less of, of the material arrangements. It happens automatically. That's Krishna's. He provides everything. But there's that verse in the... Uh, in uh, the ninth chapter, verse number 22. Uh, Vrindavan Nath, can you put that verse up? 922? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, very significant verse. And there's a pastime related to this verse. The pastime of Arjuna Acharya, which is, I'll tell that pastime as soon as we get this verse. Mm -hmm. Uh, but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Okay, so carry what they lack, preserve what they have. So that means devotional service. The Lord protects one from falling down. But there's the story of Arjuna Acharya. Arjuna Acharya was a very poor Brahmin living in South India. And every day he would go out begging. Every day he would go out begging. And um, one day he came across this verse and uh, he saw, he didn't like what he said, that I uh, carry what they lack. So he took a pen, red pen, and crossed out this part of the verse. He didn't have faith in this verse. So then he went out for begging. When he went out for begging, um, his wife was left alone at the house. I think we're getting some background music here. <laughs> and... Uh, while she was there, two young boys knocked on the door and she opened the door and she saw these two beautiful boys and they had a, a big bag of groceries. And they said, we have come on behalf of your husband. He told us to bring these groceries to you. He'll be back later. So she was surprised. And then they said, well, actually he beat us and he forced us to come and bring this to you. So we're bringing them to you. And then they left. She was shocked. The boys were so beautiful. And she couldn't think how her husband could be so cruel to these boys. Uh, when he came home, she told him the whole story. And he, he didn't understand what she was talking about. He didn't know of any boys or anything. But then he understood. He went to the verse and he saw that what he had crossed out was not crossed out anymore that those two boys were Krishna and Balaram. They came and brought the necessities that the family needed for the day's uh, food supply. So then his faith was restored. And so Krishna is like that. If one is serving the Lord, there will be no lack in devotional service. Thank you, Maharaj. I think this, this example with Arjuna Acharya and the verse. Uh, yeah, Prabhupada tells that story. It's in, you can find it in the, da in the database. But the point is, as Ishabasha midam sarvam yatkinchat chigam jagatena jagtena bumjituha magridaha kasasvidanam. Everything owned and controlled 
is by the supreme personality. Everything animate and inanimate is owned and controlled by the supreme personality. And one should take their quota. And the verse goes on to say that the next verse is if one lives according to their quota, they can aspire to live for hundreds of years. So we generally don't live according to our quota. We usually have more than we need. <laughs> and we're always complaining about lack at the same time. Uh, so this is this is life in the in the modern world. Nobody's satisfied with what they got. They always want more. And so this is material life. So the devotees have to learn this principle of simple living, high thinking, taking care of basic necessities, and focusing on the goal of life, which is to become fully Krishna conscious. And the more we do that, the more everything comes automatically by the grace of God. Not that that's the goal, that's just Krishna's way of reciprocating what is devotee. He wants to give them whatever they need. When you please Krishna in devotional service, then there's nothing else to aspire for. Everything automatically is nicely arranged by the Lord. That's the Lord's kindness to his devotee. But kinder yet is that he brings us along the path of devotional service. So you have to learn you have to learn that art of balancing. I think it's 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 quite a fine art and uh also, what you said is quite profound, which is, you know, uh, simple life. But then when we think, what is our quota? Because the mind always thinks, oh, I should be getting more. I should be getting more because uh, in my quota, I should have more. And in that endeavor or in that effort, you were over endeavor and you lose your spiritual quality of life. Mm -hmm. You don't die. You don't die from under eating. You die from over eating. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost swamis were living on a little butter every other day and sleeping a couple hours a day. It shows that the material body can endure very little and still continue on. But we have so many desires, and therefore we have to. We get we get uh, diverted by trying to fill, fulfill so many desires. When we understand this one principle that don't separate your material responsibilities from your spiritual life, and you amalgamate the consciousness and a Krishna consciousness in everything you do, then you see everything in relationship to Krishna, and you can act in that way. That's the perfectional stage. Oh, this, this, this has helped, Mara. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have another question, but uh, I think uh, if uh, I mean, the other devotees can ask, and if there's some time, then I can ask today or tomorrow. Okay, whatever you would like to do. Okay, thank you for your question. Thank you, Maharaj. So today is a very special day. It's the birthday of a very, very important personality and that personality is on July 13, 1966, ISKCON became officially uh, a society. Srila Prabhupada incorporated ISKCON on this particular day, July 13th, 1966. So today is the 51st birthday, no, not 51st, what am I saying? 57th birthday, 56th, 56th birthday 
the 50, uh, 55th birthday, 55th birthday of the ISKCON Society. So today, and we say happy birthday to ISKCON. <laughs> today is the special day. And I just remembered, we also have another birthday on this day. There is a partic particular person who is present on our conference today that her birthday is today. Sri Devi, do you know who that person is? <laughs> I don't think so, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> you are very merciful to a fool like me and a rascal like me. I don't know why. I don't deserve it, but I'm deeply grateful. Today is Sri Devi's birthday. She's a little older than Iskan, but still it's her birthday. <laughs> Happy Krishna conscious birthday, Mataji. Okay. My humble obeisances to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. I only pray to you, falling at your feet, to please bless me so that I can serve our Guru Maharaj very nicely in Krishna consciousness. I only want this blessing from each and every one of you. My humble obeisances. Thank you for always being enthusiastic for service and very much available whenever service is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we congratulate Sri Devi on her birthday. And you can all send her a gift. <laughs> oh my God. The only gift I want is your mercy and your blessings. That's the only gift I want. Nothing else. Um, I'm not sure how to respond to that, but anyway. <laughs> and of course, as I mentioned, today is also the anniversary of this guy. Uh, but sign the document incorporating this society today in 1966. So two birthdays today. And I think tomorrow we have a special program, uh, Lavanya. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please accept uh, me. Can you me. announce tomorrow's program? Um, yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, one second. So. So dear devotees, uh, tomorrow we are going to um, have a conference call um, um, for uh, his, um, his Grace Janaki Nath Prabhu. Uh, so we are all going to uh, have a call to um, give message to him and talk, talk about him if any devotees wants to talk about him and share uh, their uh, personal experiences uh, with uh, Prabhuji and the, um, their association with Prabhuji. They can please uh, uh, join the call and give, give the message. And uh, uh, please uh, give the names uh, uh, in the WhatsApp group so that we'll have um, uh, everyone uh, ready uh, to send the message to Janakinath Prabhu. I think Roberto Prabhu is going to facilitate the whole program and uh, um, he's going to coordinate with uh, Janakinath Prabhu as well um, to send the messages. Um, I guess we are going to have a live uh, program with uh, Janakinath Prabhu in his room. Um, I guess that's the program, Guru Maharaj. Um, that's what I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, so Janaki Nath will be online personally. And so he can't speak. His voice is not, uh, you know, working, but he'll be able to hear everything you say. So please um, prepare yourself for tomorrow. Um, Janaki Nath's not a small person. Uh, around all around India, practically in many major temples all over India. They're doing pujas and various types of homas and yagyas for Janaki Nath. Um, he is, although he's just a small little brahmachari in Bhaktivedanta Manor, 
his glories have spread all over the world. Anyone who's met him or knows him knows that uh, he's a very special personality. But he needs your support in this very difficult time he's going through, very difficult, extremely difficult, not, not just some difficulty, but a lot of, lot of, lot of, he's going through tremendous pain, excruciating pain, which is not something that comes and goes, but it's constant. So, um, but he's, he's keeping his focus on Krishna and uh, what he's doing their best to assist him in any way we can. So please join us tomorrow and tell the other devotees to come also. And we will be very grateful for anyone who comes forward to speak something to Janaki Nath. You can, whatever you feel is appropriate, you may speak something about him, some relationship you have with him, some incident maybe you shared with him, something that you can connect with him or something from the Shastras that illustrate his qualities, anything you want to somehow or other connect with Janaki Nath will be very much appreciated by everyone. Okay, and everyone will benefit from that also. So that'd be the same time as today, four o'clock UK time. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, dear devotees, do you have, is there any other question or any comment or realization? I have one question, Guru Maharaj, if I can. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Guru Maharaj, we uh, like uh, like in 2.40, it was mentioned that if we are in Krishna consciousness, then uh, definitely we are going to have uh, human life in the next birth. And uh, it's going to be either in great cultured Brahman fa family or rich aristocratic family. Um, I, like bit like... Uh, rich, like great culture, Brahman family, I understand because that means it's definitely going to provide the right atmosphere uh, where we can or anybody can really take the uh, progress further in Krishna consciousness. But the rich aristocratic family, why Krishna, like why Prabhupada mentioned rich arist aristocratic family because that means it has high risk. I understand uh, poor family means like uh, again, like struggling for material uh, things, but rich aristocratic means high risk of getting lost in material opulence. Yeah, that danger is there. Mm -hmm. Janma, Mitru, Jara, no, I'm sorry, Janma, what is that? Janma, Aishwara, Shruti, Sri Beer, Ayyamana, Um That verse is spoken by uh, Kunti Devi, you know, that those take birth in families and the four qualities is Janma, good birth, Aishwara, riches, Shruta, intelligence, good learning, Sri, bodily beauty. Now, you mentioned, and this is what Prabhupada says, he says the benefit of the rich, this astrocratic family is that one does not have to concern themselves about the needs of life. Everything is already provided for them. And then they can focus on Krishna consciousness. That's the advantage. Whether they take that advantage or not, especially in today's society, we see people misusing their good birth by becoming, you know, debauchees, by using wealth and position to exploit themselves and others. So there is that there is that danger, but then the other good part is that they don't have to worry about trying to make a living or arranging so many things. Everything is provided. If they just focus on Krishna consciousness, then then there they can make fast progress in devotional service. That's Prabhupada's statement on that. So that's the advantage. <laughs> but 
But as you mentioned, the temptation of having material, uh, being materially lucrative can also cause one to go away. But then again, the person who gets into that situation has had devotional service in their last life. So there's a good chance that they will connect again in that life, in the present life. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. You see that in India, that many people who are wealthy, who live in India, they're very pious and religious. But then you say, when you come to the West, you see the opposite <laughs> because they, they haven't had any Sukriti. So we can feel Guru Maharaj like uh, people who are in, let's in that example, who are in West or somewhere in rich family, but uh, they have done some devotional service in previous lives. Then uh, by mercy of Krishna, uh, they might be connected with some devotee or somebody so they can really further progress. Yeah, they'll get an opportunity whether they take it or not. But it's you know, it's Krishna's way of saying you don't have to struggle to live in this world. Everything is provided now. Just focus on the goal of life, Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any other questions, Guru Maharaj, on the chat. Okay, or we, can, we can stop here and we'll see you all tomorrow. And please, everyone come tomorrow and invite everyone else today. Tomorrow, try to have a big turnout tomorrow to um, to be with Janaki Nath Prabhu. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Samaveda Bhakta Vindaki. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Ananta Koti Vishnu Brind ki jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Suda. Hipti. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your class. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Diktesh, thank you again. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Susanna. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Amrita. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Krishna Priya, my obeisances. My obeisances, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. May you live hundreds of years. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you.